God. Continue to praise the Lord. For God is worthy to be praised. Praise Him. Thank Him. Oh, magnify the name of the Lord. People of God, thank you so much. Thank you, music ministry. Thank you, John Player. Thank you, bassist, drummer, singers. Thank you all. Bringing it, Jesse. You're moving on up. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. It's reverberating. We're moving on up. God is not done yet. We are a work in progress. God is working his plan and doing what God wants to do. Can I get a witness somewhere in the house? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you known the joy of the Lord? Praise him. Woo, man, oh man. God is good. It's amazing what you can get from worship. Worshiping the Lord, gathered together in the sanctuary to give God praise. Come one, come all, whatever and whoever you are. Come one, come all to give God thanks as we celebrate life as a faith community, having been together for 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. The statistics say that many churches that start out if you make it to the third year, you're doing fine. If you make it to the fifth year, you're really doing fine. But if you make it to the tenth year, it means you really, really are doing fine. And we give God praise and glory. And for all of your hard work, for everything that you've done to make this church what it is, we give thanks for you. All the gifts being used in ways that will empower and transform the people of God, we give praise. Thank you, everybody, for your service today, for your presence today, for bringing the gifts of your spirit on this day that the Lord has given. I'd like to turn your attention, if you will, and let me say this as a preface to this particular part of the service. If you feel like standing up, feel free to do so. If you don't, it's okay. You can remain seated. Just wanted to make that note as we turn our attention to the Gospel of Matthew, the ninth chapter, starting with the 27th verse down to the 34th verse. A scripture that I shared some weeks ago and return to it as well as a scripture in the book of James. The scriptures read, as Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. And when he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. And then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, see that no one else knows about this. But they went out joyfully and spread the good news about Jesus all over the region. And while they were going out, a man who was demon possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. And the crowd was amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God, and then over to the book of James. 
chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes scattered among the nation's greetings. Brothers and sisters, consider it pure joy, pure joy, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. The testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generosity or generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. When you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wildflower. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, trial, trial. Having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And the church said amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. We are gathered here this day because we love you and we seek your divine guidance. We seek your healing and we seek your presence as we walk this journey with you. We live our lives in the world each day looking for those places that we might be somebody. Looking to be loved and accepted and affirmed and seeking justice and peace and mercy and grace everywhere we go, but also being instruments of it. Today, as we gather, as we sing our praises and shout hallelujah, give us the strength to do it your way. Thank you for not counting our infirmities and our imperfections. But thank you for taking them and using them as instruments of our continuing joy. Come Holy Spirit today. Speak fresh to us the promises that you've kept. Remind us of who we are and whose we are. And never let go. Never, ever, ever let go, Lord. As we walk with you. In those moments when we shake our hands from you because we want to go on our own. Never, never, ever, ever, ever let us go. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to do traffic in eternity in the midst of our temporality. Come Holy Spirit today. Use us as you would. Heal us as you can. Renew us as you promised. In the name of your son, Jesus. And in his name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen.
Amen. We welcome you and also the listening and viewing audience. Our theme this morning is again the subject of faith, which is probably the most important aspect of our spiritual development and our participation in the life of the church. There is no greater spiritual asset, no greater quality, strength, promise, or element of endurance and trust than faith. Faith is the belief with strong conviction. Firm belief in something for which there is no tangible proof. It is complete trust and confidence and reliance and devotion in God. Faith is how believers come to God and put their trust in God. Faith is one of the Christian's greatest assets, one of the highest qualities, one of the most available resources and possessions of those Christians in the faith community. God provides believers with the faith they need to believe in God. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. Through faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. In the final analysis, our choices hinge on faith. Our victories depend on faith. Whether we believe and trust that God can achieve the impossible is based on faith for nothing is impossible with God even if we are content to live in the halfway houses of almost Christian or on the intersection of not quite there and coulda woulda shoulda made it faith is the key that unlocks the door faith is the spirit that lifts us higher in the midst of our daily travails and our imperfections and our sins. Faith is the gold standard of our spiritual acquisition and our daily toil. Seeing and believing, but believing and then seeing. Three basic points I'd like to make. Faith is seeking and finding and trusting and touching God. The blind men in our scripture were physically blind. They could not see. But Jesus came upon them as they were crying loudly, Have mercy upon us, son of David. The scriptures say that when he entered the house, the blind men had been seeking him. And Jesus found them in the house. Yes, we should seek God. But know that God seeks us. God seeks us. And God finds us in our condition, whatever that condition may be. God is intentionally seeking us, choosing us, testing us, moving us, growing us, enabling us, prospering us, giving us victory in the midst of our human contradictions and infirmities. It is God, very God 
who has providence and dominion and power to direct our steps and to order our ways. They cried out loud. Loud, too loud, like the preacher says it, too loud. Son of David, we can't see you, but we feel you. We can't see you, but we feel you. Son of David, have mercy. We are on God's mind. Eventually, we meet up like the blind man, Jesus asks a question. Do you believe and trust that I can do this? Do you believe that I can do this? The answer is yes. We believe. And he touched their eyes. And he said, according to your faith, according to your faith, according to your faith, according to your faith let it be done and their eyes were open not just physical blindness but all other forms of blindness as a metaphor for the limitations of our human condition we can be spiritually blind, relationship blind. We can be blind in so many other ways that we refuse to see or to hear or to touch or to receive the power of God's Holy Spirit. Do you believe? You, 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 do you believe? that I can do this. Not, wait a minute, let me see, let me check this thing out, let me see what's going on here. Yes, we believe it. We can't see it, but we can feel it already. The process of healing has already started. Like fire shut up in our bones. Don't you feel something? Like fire. Yes. And they were healed. They were healed. They did not languish in uncertainty about God. But Jesus worked through their faith. The faith becomes the portal. Faith becomes the entranceway. Faith becomes the gateway that he does his greatest work. How are you going to achieve anything in life if you don't have faith in yourself? If you're running around letting everybody else's opinion about who you are and what you are and what you do conditions and drives who you come to be? No. It's God who gave birth to you, who designed you with your designer genes and has given you and shaped you into the person that God wants you to be despite what everybody else is saying something about. Despite what the people say, despite what the naysayers say, despite 
What the disqualifiers say that you cannot qualify for God's grace, that you cannot be redeemed or saved or accepted as you are by Jesus. Too much. You ain't this. You ain't that. You ain't got this. Oh, yes, you do. That ain't nothing that nobody else can say to you. That is the providence of God who created you. Faith is seeking God, finding God, trusting and touching God. Faith is persisting in being found like the lame man at the pool of Bethsaida, Bethsaida who lay by the water 38 years. And so... Faith is seeking and finding and trusting and touching God. Making good on God's promises. Secondly, faith can be speechless but not hopeless like the man who couldn't speak, who was possessed by a demon. You don't have to always use loud words. You can be speechless. You can be Taken over by another spirit that shuts you down, that causes you to not speak when you should speak. He didn't say a word because he couldn't talk. The blind couldn't see, but they could talk. The man who was possessed couldn't talk, but he could see. And what did he do? He called the demon out and threw him out. And the man began speaking like he had always spoken before. That's the power of God. Your testimony, your testimony does not have to be verbal. Your testimony can be in your heart. You don't always have to use words. It's what you're feeling inside that makes its way to God. Faith can be speechless, but not hopeless. Whether we can see and speak or not speak, but see, even when the demons shut us down, the capacity to believe and trust in Jesus will still make a way. And not being able to speak should not be a deterrent to our seeking and finding Christ. Whatever the case, the situation, whatever the conditions and circumstances and setting and environment, Jesus can heal even if faith cannot speak. The God we serve will speak for us and recognize our condition saying to the demons, get out and stay out, be gone and stay gone, move out and move on because I'm about to move in. So you'll be under new management. I'm about to move in and y'all about to move out. So get on up out of here. It's time for me to take up residency in the folk I want to be in. So they got a new quit claim deed. I'm the owner of this house. I am the occupier. I have taken residence in my beloved. And the sign reads under new management. Faith can be speechless but not hopeless as our trust and faith in Christ is always operational. Whatever our condition, you may not be able to walk but he can walk for you. You may not be able to talk but he can talk for you. Whatever you need. 
He's there. Third point. Faith can be pressured, but resilient. Faith is under pressure. Especially when we are tottering on the edge of doubt. Now let me say this. Let me quote one of the famous theologians, Paul Tillich, who said in a famous address to Princeton University, he said, um, doubt is the flip side of faith. Doubt is natural. But when you flip the coin, where does it land? Does it land on doubt? Does it stay on doubt? Third side, you've heard me say, is the edge of the coin that binds the two sides together, making three sides. Faith will include some doubt, but faith will find its own way. We have a we believe faith. Our first capital movement at Hope Church was titled, We Believe. And we were tested along the way. But we kept on moving in faith. Faith means supporting the church and not holding back from the church our tithes, talents, and treasure because we have a problem with something or somebody in the church. We put ourselves under pressure, assuming God will answer every request we presumably offer by faith on every occasion, not so. I talked to a gentleman some years ago. He said he was still angry with God because God did not grant his wish. And so he was upset for a good portion of his life because God didn't answer his prayer about doing a specific thing of what he wanted so badly. But you don't give up on God on that one trial. Faith means able to be, to, 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 to receive a rejection and still move on with confidence. Faith is the power to rebound from, from disappointment, from failure, from all of those things and keep confidence in God. Keep pressing on no matter what they say no matter what roadblocks they put in your way. Faith can be pressurized because of our doubt and our ambivalence in making the choices about which direction we should go. When opportunities arise, the faithful are energized while the fearful are paralyzed. God is not going to answer every thing exactly the way we want it. We may want it, but do we need it? I'm glad God didn't answer some prayers, the things that I wanted. Faith means trusting and sustaining, sustaining with God when things don't turn out our way. Do we stop believing in God altogether? No. Faith can be the pressure cooker. Faith can be the tenderizer. Faith can be the hot pot. Faith can be the pressurizer in the give and take of church life. When folks is getting on your last nerve. That's where you learn to become battle tested in the volunteer organization. That's where you learn to fight the good fight God's way. That's the way you learn to be steadfast and determined to do what God wants you to do. In spite of the enemy, in spite of the opposition, in spite of all of the impediments that tend to fling themselves in your way. Faith. To give or not to give, that is the question. To be or not to be, in the words of Shakespeare, that's the question. Faith has got to go through something to get through something. Fourth and final point. 
Faith must become action-oriented. Faith without works is dead. Listen to this story. Pastor John Basango of Houston, Texas, describes a time when his daughter Melanie, Melanie Jan, age five, came to him and asked for a dollhouse. John promptly nodded and promised to build her one. Then he went back to reading his book. Soon he glanced out the study window and saw his daughter, arms filled with dishes, toys, dolls, making trip after trip until she had a great pile of playthings in the yard. He asked his wife, what's Melody Jan doing? She said, oh, you promised to build her a dollhouse and she believes you and she's just getting ready for it. The reverend said, you would have thought I had been hit by an atom bomb. He later said, I threw the book aside. I raced to the Yumber Lard for supplies and quickly built the little girl a dollhouse. Now, why did I respond that way? Because I wanted to? No. Because she deserved it? No. I did it because her daddy had given her his word and she believed it and acted upon it. When I saw her faith, nothing could keep me from carrying my word out as I had promised. This is God with us. When God makes a promise, God will keep that promise and we had be ready to prepare as though it is already so. She trusted her father. As we trust our Father, our, our Son, our Holy Ghost, we trust in the Holy Trinity with our three manifestations of the Spirit and the presence and the power of God. I'm getting ready to stop. Somebody said they wanted shorter sermons. I said, did God say that? It wasn't no answer. So let me add another 30 minutes. I could hear God saying, no, I didn't say that either now. Oh, now don't, don't get, get, get caught up too much here. The point is, we've got to prepare. We've got to do what we need to do to raise our expectations of what God will yet do. Faith honors God and God honors faith. That's the key. Somebody said, Reverend, are you discouraged? I said, discouraged about what? The normal obstacles we face along the way are just part of conditioning, part of bodybuilding, part of doing what we got to do. Part of our focus is to build the morale of the body of believers so that they can have faith, so that they know what to do in cases of trial or challenge or whatever that may be. Faith is the key. Taxi tested faith. Organic living faith. Faith that's tried. A faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. That's what it's about. We define ourselves, Greek word koinonia, which means faith community. But no word gives us more trouble than that word. Well, there he goes again talking about faith. Well, which, what am I supposed to talk about? Just give in? Call it a day? Say forget this, forget that? 
We are faith emissaries. We are faith spotlights. We are faith repositories. We are faith turners, faith shouters, faith livers, faith givers, faith movers. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Doors of the church are open. 